Nice. You felt the, the essence of, of infrastructure coming your way. Excited to talk about Chambers Bay today. Went in, uh, went there a couple weeks ago. Uh, really had only seen the US Open there. Didn't know a whole lot else about it, but just know that the course got absolutely vilified after the USGA, they had a green situation. I don't want to speak for Ben. I was blown away. I loved it. Yeah, I totally had this preconceived notion that it wasn't quite right. There was something wrong with it. Uh, There's something we were going to go out there and see that brought it down a run from some of the great courses um, in that part of the world and not even close. I mean, it absolutely knocked my socks off. Oh, beauty. How about nice. that? Very good. You know, interesting site for land. It was a quarry and uh, a lot of the gravel that went to make like the highways and in and around the Seattle Tacoma area was taken from that quarry. So um, kind of a big, big, big bathtub. Almost. Yeah, I loved your, your comp about it, it being a bathtub. It really was, but there's no water out there, boy. It was dry, it was firm, it was fast. The conditions were perfect. They converted it to all, all Poana. Um, what was that? Po it was that Poa Fescue mix. Okay. Well, it used to just be Fescue. Used to be Fescue wall to wall. And, yeah. and now they have that intermingling, which you can see it, but God, it was so consistent and so solid. And maybe some of it too is there's, you know, there were some layers, right? So it was super dried out and burned out and just monochromatic during the open. Whereas I feel like now there's, you can see some layers up the hill. The fairways are, are green, but still firm and fast. It gets off to a rousing start, number one. Um, kind of a weird check-in experience. The clubhouse is up at the top of the hill I and mean, you got to drive down to a parking lot and then go down there. I think with COVID, they've had the shuttle shut down. Right. But uh, number one, par five, really cool like tabletop green that with this nasty fall off on the left. Um, you know, but probably an easy easy par, hard, hard birdie hole. Yeah. You know, you gotta hit a pretty demanding second shot in there to get a chance at, at a two putt bird. Yeah, but it comes out, I mean, it comes out swinging. Like the scale is right there in front of you. The um, I struggle to call them dunes, but the landscape left over from the quarry, uh, you know, is, is, is present right away. Kind of playing in and around these dunes on that lower portion. And then everything else sits up on this hill, but but at no point do you feel like you're kind of, it's a, it's kind of a, it's a cool puzzle. You're working your way up and down the hill and across the hill and all that, but at no point do you feel like, it's not like Olympic club, but you feel like you're just like this all day long. The farther away you get from the water, the better your view. Whereas most courses, you know, you kind of get away from the water and it loses a little bit of, of personality. Whereas this one, it's just heightened the higher you get up the hill, which is a rare, rare thing. Lighty, give him the kick. Oh, so good. <laughs> it's getting better all the time. Really good pull up that hill. That was a good putt there. Good putt, buddy. Number four was was an exceptionally cool hole. Yep. Um, just a crazy, crazy mega false front. Five was cool. Six was one of my favorite holes. Uh, it plays in these like little knobs. Um, Entirely different depending on what tee you play from as well. Yeah. If you're playing it back, I mean, it's a full driver and a full second shot. Where we played. Uh, I mean, you could run one up almost to the green. Really good shot. I will take it. Yeah, that's a that's a really fun one to, to flex the tees from. And then you kind of climb back up. You, you climb back up the hill seven, uh, seven, and then to, to to eight T. I would say eight and nine are probably the two most not controversial holes, but probably polarizing holes on the yeah. course. Eight's a kind of a split level uh, fairway. Uh, par five up the hill and you really have to work a ball right to left to 
you know, get it to stay on that upper fairway, have a better look. Oh, that's, that's, right right there. Way down there. that's on the green, Go. motherfucker. Go. Oh my lord, John Pond. Go in. Oh my god, off the back slope. Here it goes. Oh my lord. Oh my lord. No, it didn't go in, but he got about a five footer. Uh, they're, they're two very distinctive holes on the property. Not sure they totally flow and match the rest of the golf holes, but you know, from time to time, variety is the spice of life. I enjoyed eight quite a bit. You're, all, you're up at the high point on the property, uh, up just under the clubhouse, and then you're on nine T, and nine is this thrilling uh, par three shot. I'm not sure if it's fair. <laughs> the green is pretty. Uh, pretty firm down there and it kind of runs away from your slopes hard left to right. It's a fine line from perfect and you know, frankly with some pins like you're kind of three putt and in some instances the worse you miss the better you are on that hole. Yeah um, which as, a, as, as evidenced by our friend John Pond who made one of the best pars in the history of golf yes, outrageous. from 75 yards left. That's one of the filthiest up and downs I've ever seen. Nice. Hey, baby. Come on. Come on. Who are we? Pay up, TC. Thought, I thought 10 was an exceptional hole, too. Yeah. 10 reminded me of something you'd see at Bannon Trails or Stream Song Red. Just like plays up in this little pocket. There's a little kind of coffin bunker up the left. Oh. Looked claustrophobic, but it really, there was plenty of room up there. Oh, 11's a strong, um, Really strong par four, great green up there. Nice little green site sitting really gently on the hill. God, that's so good, TC. Yeah. So good. What a fucking shot, bro. Pretty thrilling oh, driving man. hole as well. Like yeah. you, you can kind of decide. There's a lot of room right, but it kind of bleeds into hitting it left. We'll let our. By the way, Madison Airport dialed, fantastic. 12 was a little, I don't know, I can't really put my finger on 12. It's uphill par four, super short par four, massive mound up the left, kind of a punch bowl in the back, but really, really deep green. And it's it's a short four and you're hitting driver, but you gotta hit two good shots to get to get it close. Yeah, it's a little odd where you know you can't see the pin if it's in the back left and you're trying to, to drive the green. I'm not sure how I feel about the hole overall, but I'll give it that. It, it was distinctive. I would need I mean, to play very it. unique. I would need to play it a few more times. 14, you play down the hill, dog leg left, par four. Uh, just a sweeping drive down there. Really good green there. And then, yeah, and then you get to 15, which is kind of the signature hole. You've got the, the railroad tracks going through. You got the islands in the background. You got the mountains out on the Olympic Peninsula. And the lone tree as well. Lone tree, great green. We almost, had, we almost saw a couple aces there uh, over our three rounds. And then, uh, and, and, then you, and then you go over to 16, which I think is an even better hole. Yeah. Short par four, um, you know, kind of a narrow sliver of a green back there. Hard up against the railroad tracks. Everybody remembers Brandon Grace laying back off the tee and blowing one right into the railroad tracks. No way. Oh, nice shot, man. And you fucking hit the flag. Yeah. I was feeling good about my drive. Hey. Um, but just, uh, one of the better short par fours I've ever played, I think. Yeah, spectacular. Um, and, I mean, of course, I had an eagle putt. Why would it not be spectacular? Yeah. I hate that, man. 17's a really cool par three. Probably had an unfair, like that back back right pin there. Shouldn't have been so great. Gnarly. I didn't love 18. See, I liked 18. I liked 18 quite a bit. I, I think, you know, for me, the, the distinctive thing that I'll always remember about Chambers is when you get down to 18, I mean, you're in a park. You are, are where people are flying kites and, and throwing Frisbees. And um, there's the old like mill structure that's still there. And that was really distinctive, really unique. I mean, you're walking on a world-class golf course and there's people, you know, walking with strollers right down your, your left-hand side, up 16, 17, and then 18, you're back in the park. And I, I just thought that was really cool. That um, it gave me a good feeling inside. Right. Right. He's automatic. Overall, I wish I had more thumbs. I'd give it four thumbs up if I could. Uh, just an all around great place to go play golf. I'd put it just slightly below Bandon. It's like, it's up there and like, it's a truly world-class golf course. Yeah, and if you don't want to get blown off the planet and still have the water views and still get that experience, go to Chambers. <laughs>